those of you listening by Blog Talk Radio or Shoutcast Radio, we welcome you to Fire and Grace Church. I'm Pastor Dean Odell, and we welcome you. Glad you're listening out there. A lot of things going down in the world. For those of you in our church, you have to bear with me. Um, viewer discretion is advised. But I'm going to have to share with you what's going on. Uh, last night, uh, the Lord really laid on my heart. You know, I was studying and preparing to continue on in Genesis, and the Lord was just. You're going to have to pause, son, for a minute because some things have come to our attention out there in the world. And this is the verse the Lord gave me. Because see, frankly, there's going to be a lot of pastors, a lot of preachers, a lot of evangelists, a lot of prophets even, a lot of so-called apostles out there, and a lot of Christians right now, they already have blood on their hands. But very soon, their hands are going to be drenched and dripping with the blood of millions because they have not warned them of the approaching sword, the approaching famine, the approaching judgment, the approaching persecution. There has not been warning and the people are not prepared. They're not prepared spiritually. They're not prepared emotionally. They're not prepared physically or financially. They haven't made preparations uh, for their family to survive what prophets, true prophets, and what the Word of God and the prophecies of God and what now even the world around us is saying to us. And it's really been saying it for years now. But now we know, and I'm going to show you in the Word, but this is the Scripture and this is why I preach like I preach. And what I was going to say for our church here. You know you've been warned. You know you've been taught over the last few years. But we have a larger audience now that listens to us by radio, by podcast, by internet, and they're growing every day. And I just, there's just a greater responsibility to make sure that I get these out, these warnings out very clearly because my calling is first before being a pastor before being a teacher, is to be a prophet and to be a watchman. All right? So I want you to read this with me. We're going to read Ezekiel 33 here. And it's very, very clear. We're going to start up at verse 1. And this is why there's so many pastors and so many ministers that have blood on their hands and they're going to have more blood on their hands as we enter into these days ahead of us. Verse 1, Ezekiel 33, verse 1. And again the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, speak to the children of thy people, and say unto them, When I bring the sword upon the land, if the people of the land take a man of their coast and set him for their watchman, if when he seeth the sword come upon the land, he blow the trumpet and warn the people, then whosoever heareth the sound of the trumpet and taketh not warning, if the sword come and take him away, his blood shall be on his own head. He heard the sound of the trumpet and took not warning, his blood shall be upon him. But he that taketh warning shall deliver his soul. See, this is why warnings are so important. If you don't take heed to warnings, you will not deliver your soul. And your soul is your mind, will, and emotions. Your soul is what makes you you. It's what makes you special. It's what God created you, a living soul that has a spirit and lives in a body. Amen? But your soul is going to live forever. Your soul and your spirit, and eventually when Jesus returns, the body will be resurrected and changed and we'll be unified. But the bottom line is that warning, taking heed to warnings is part of the Scriptures. It's part of who God is he warns His people. He even warns the wicked before He brings His wrath, His judgment, or He pulls His hand back and He lets the devil do what the devil's going to do. Now, God is able to deliver, to protect, 
or to give grace through a situation to those who will take heed to the warnings. But those who will not listen, those who will mock and scoff, even among Christians, those who, who make light of the warnings of God through the true prophets, through the Word of God, those who make light of those warnings are in grave danger of losing their soul. There's so many right now that just do not grasp the looming darkness that is ahead of us and what it's going to mean. Some people, and I'm talking about Christian people that go to churches every Sunday, are going to lose their minds. They're going to go crazy, mentally off the charts. They're going to have nervous and mental breakdowns because they do not take heed to the warnings and to strengthen themselves in God and God alone. If you don't know what it means to prepare and take heed to the warning, boy, I'm going to tell you what, you better figure it out now about that it's time to pray. It's time to fast. It's time to meditate on the Word. It's time to bind and resist the devil. It's time to cry out to God for mercy. It's time to put away sin and compromise and lukewarmness. It's time to quit being lazy and chasing everything else in the world. You better take heed to the warning. The darkness is upon us. There's so many Christians right now. Listen, I know this for a fact. There are so many Christians right now that go, oh yeah, whatever, preacher. Oh yeah, I know that. I've heard that. And they're still looking at pornography and they're still committing fornication and they're still committing adultery and they're still watching hours and hours of TV and they're still just distracted with everything that's in this world and they they, they, they go, oh yeah, I've heard that, I've heard that, I've heard that, whatever. And, and these preachers and these teachers have lulled them to sleep with, with the teachings of eternal security, giving them false security and a, and a pre-tribulation rapture myth. And so they don't take heed to the warnings. These doctrines of devils, once saved, always saved, and the pre-trib rapture, these are doctrines of devils that have lulled the church to sleep and has caused them not to take heed to the warnings. And just something very simple like having extra water and food when the economy collapses, they don't even think they need to do that. And what are they going to do when they see their children starving and they don't even have water to drink and these preachers didn't even warn them? Oh, we're going to be out of here. That is such a stupid American idea. Not going to happen to us. Such a stupid. We must take heed. And especially... God has given so many signs of the time. Pardon me for preaching a minute. Where was I? Verse 5. He heard the sound of the trumpet and took not warning. His blood shall be upon him. But he that taketh warning shall deliver his soul. But if the watchmen see the sword come and blow not the trumpet and the people be not warned, if the sword come and take any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at the watchman's hand. So thou, son of man, I have set thee a watchman unto the house of Israel, Therefore thou shalt hear the word at my mouth and warn them from me. When I say unto the wicked, O wicked man, thou shalt surely die if thou dost not speak to warn the wicked from his way, that the wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thine hand. Nevertheless, if thou warn the wicked of his way, to turn from it, if he do not turn from his way, he shall die in his iniquity, but the watchman... The prophet, the preacher, the minister, the Christian, whoever is the watchman, whoever is giving the warning, has delivered their soul. See, this is why I believe most American preachers will be in hell when it's all over with.
They have preached prosperity and endless blessings as the nation is going bankrupt. As we are headed into economic Armageddon. They've sold millions of books about how to prosper and be rich. As Ezekiel the prophet warned, he said, these false prophets have said peace, peace, when there is no peace. They said times are going to be good. Things are going to be okay. You're going to be okay. I'm going to be okay. Everything's going to be okay. See, here's the thing. Is there a season of God's blessing? Is there a time of prosperity? Is there a time of peace? You know, Solomon said there was a time of peace and there was a time of war. There was a time for everything under the sun. What makes a false prophet a false prophet is not that he doesn't preach something that might be in God's Word It's preaching the wrong message at the wrong time. Which shows he doesn't know God or he's lost his relationship with God. He's lost his discernment. He's lost his ability to hear when he does not understand when we're in a time when the sword is coming, the famine is coming, the judgment is coming. See, I'm going to tell you right now, I have, I hear the sounds of destruction and famine and the sword. It's not pleasant to have to be a warning watchman. It's not pleasant to have to say, I know that I know that I know. The American economy is collapsing. The dollar is getting more and more worthless and more and more pushed aside. The nations of the world are ganging up on us because frankly our evil presidents over the last few decades have made us out to be bullies both economically, both militarily. The world hates the United States and Russia and China and South America and Africa and Europe. They're turning against us on every side. We're being cut out. We're being cut out of the oil trade. We're being cut out. The dollar's being cut out. Folks don't get it. It's over. The American dream is now the American nightmare. 2008 was a warning shot across the bow. The financial collapse of 2008 was the warning to Americans. It can all evaporate overnight. Your house can go from being worth $200,000 to being worth $100,000 overnight. It's over. When this economy collapses and it is a planned, systematic destruction of the U.S. dollar and the U.S. economy by the Illuminati bankers and by our enemies abroad, but when this happens, it's going to trigger a series of events. Martial law will be instituted. The cities of America will be turned into ten times, a hundred times more dangerous because the, the gangs and the thugs and the criminals are going to be hungry and desperate. People know this. Y'all, why do you think the Department of Homeland Security has bought billions of rounds of ammunition? Why do you think the Department of Homeland Security bought targets, paper targets, of normal looking American men, women, and children to use to shoot at? Why do you think 
that there is. I posted it on Facebook. Why do you think that there is a U.S. Army document that has been released that even says on it, it was only really for the eyes of the DOD. But because there's some good people that are still around that want to let the rest of us know what's going on, this document got leaked about civilian internment and resettlement camps for American citizens. Oh, God. The hour is late. The shock to the American, the average everyday American that's distracted. The shock that's coming when they go to the bank and their ATM cards won't work. And then when they finally work, the balance is zero because the banksters just robbed you. Oh, that couldn't happen, Pastor. Oh, it happened in Cyprus. It's being, it was suggested to do it to the Greek people. Listen, Ukraine is falling apart. You want to see a picture of what can happen in America? Look at what's happening in the Ukraine right now. The Americans, we were just so arrogant, so prideful. It can't happen to us. No, it's happening. It is happening. Let's look at some verses. I want to show you. The end time prophecies of the Bible have always, have always put forth the fact that economic destruction would be part of the problem. Okay, let's go. I want to read a few verses before I share with you some things that are going on. Let's go to James chapter 5. James chapter 5. I'll let everybody get there. There's a New Testament too. James chapter 5. Go to now, ye rich men, weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. Your riches are corrupted and your garments are moth-eaten. Your gold and silver is cankered. And the rust of them shall be a witness against you and you shall eat your flesh as it were fire. And you have heaped treasure together for the last days. Behold the hire of the laborers who have reaped down your fields, which is of you kept back by fraud, crieth, and the cries of them that have reaped are entered into the ears of the Lord of the harvest. You lived in pleasure on the earth and been wanton, and you have nourished your hearts as in the day of slaughter. You have condemned and killed the just, and he does not resist you. Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold the husbandman that waited for the precious fruit of the earth. He has long patience for it until he received the early and the latter rain. Be ye also patient. Establish your hearts for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. I believe he was giving us a clear sign. He tells the rich men that miseries are going to come upon them. Or what could be more miserable to a rich man for him to lose his idol and everything that he lives for and loves. And that's his riches. He tells them this silver and the gold will be worthless. Because let me just explain to you something. When it comes down to starving, and you've got a choice between a loaf of bread or a wedge of gold, which one do you really need? You hear what I'm saying? Now we knew, he said to these people, they've heaped together treasures for the last days. Let's go 
Let's look at some other things. You guys know I've preached on this, but even within the seals of Revelation, the four horsemen of the apocalypse, one of the four horsemen, the black horse. Let's read about the black horse, Revelation 6. Again, Everybody, Revelation 6. These four horsemen are very interesting. Let's just read it. And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder. And one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw and beheld, or behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast saying, Come and see. And there went out another horse that was red, and powers given unto him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see. And I beheld, and lo, a black horse. And he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny. And see that thou hurt not the oil and the wine. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, or a green horse, and his name that sat on him was Death, and hell followed after him, or followed with him, and power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with the sword, and with hunger, and with death, and with the beast of the earth. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw unto the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? And white robes were given unto every one of them. And it was said unto them that they should rest for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. And I beheld and opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood, and the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their place, places. And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man, hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains, and said unto the mountains and rocks, Fall on us. Hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, for the great day of his wrath is come. Who shall be able to stand? Now these seals here, and I've shared this before, these seven seals are are a picture of the second coming and the things that lead up to the second coming. They're an overall view that lead up to the second coming of Jesus. And, And what we have in that, we see a white horse, which I believe is represented by the forces that want to to move us into a world government. The Roman Catholic Church, and the colors are very telling, the Roman Catholic Church, the UN, the Trilateral Commission, Council on Foreign Relations, all their symbols. I mean, even the Council on Foreign Relations symbol is a rider on a white horse. The UN, white vehicles. The Roman Catholic Church, the Pope wears white. Got a white plane, a white Pope mobile, a white limo, a white chopper. These forces are the forces and the spirit behind these forces have been moving the world toward this world government. The red horse we know is communism and socialism and fascism. Red has represented communism. It's obvious. Communism and Nazism. And socialism. And it says power was given unto them to take peace from the earth. And look at all the wars we fought. Vietnam and Korea and all these little skirmishes down in Guatemala and Panama and all these things. We've been fighting communism for years. Now we just gave up. 
The communism has taken peace from the earth and killed millions and millions of people with Mao, with Soviet Union. But then he said, look, think about it, you guys. The progression. We would have these movements to push us toward a one world government. When did those get real strong? Around the turn of the 1900s. 1913, when the Federal Reserve was put into place by Woodrow Wilson that took over. And all those guys said, we will have a world government whether you like it or not. What well, one of them said, you know what one of them said about the United States? Give me control of their money and I care not who makes their laws. We lost control of America in 1913. It's just taken them a long time to overcome the church. Because at one point in America, Christianity and the church was strong and it was a strong resistance to tyranny. And because we had a good document called the Constitution based on the freedoms that we find in the Bible... It was a good defense against. But President Bush, President Obama, y'all don't even know that when President Bush was in office, do you know that he said the Constitution was just a piece of paper? Bush said it was just a piece of paper. And he put the first tear in it. But Obama's lit a match to it. And here's what's sad. Most Americans don't care anymore. They're more concerned with Lady Gaga or what's her name? Katy Perry or Beyonce and Jay-Z. No, our country has been taken over by evil people. Here's what's so wild. People in other countries understand better that America has been taken over than we do. Even Iran knows we've been taken over by Luciferian Satan worshipers. But the black horse, the black horse told us that there would be a progression, a move toward a world government. So the early 1900s, and then we had the League of Nations after World War I, right? And then the League of Nations died, but in its wake was resurrected the United Nations. And the United Nations Charter and the United Nations has always been the goal is to be a one world government. Exactly what the Bible prophesied, that the nations of the world would come together and become one in Revelation 13. And they would push toward a one world government that would be a one world dictatorship and a one world communistic, socialistic government. Then we saw the rise of communism, the red horse. We've seen the progression. Communism went to its peak until about the late 1980s. Then it declined a little bit. didn't go away. But it declined a little bit. Why? Because it had to make way for the next horse to come in. And that is for the oil issue and the economic issue to begin to take over the planet. And now because of oil, the petrodollar and all the issues around the Middle East oil and the United States and the demand for oil in China and the demand for oil in India. When China and India have half the world's population, there is a... What you guys don't realize is that the war is over the oil. That's why this verse said, see not that you hurt the oil and the wine. Don't hurt the oil because everything in the economy in the world is based on oil, petroleum, products. Even Do you know that even everything that's made out of plastic is made out of petroleum? We have no concept how deep this runs. And so we've seen the progression and how oil, when? When did the car come into being? The car industry. 
the Industrial Revolution, late 1800s, early 1900s. So we've moved into an economy that is completely dependent on the supply of oil. And the whole world economy is based on it. And most of it happens to be in the hands of religious, radical Muslim fanatics. Though what a lot of people don't know is Saudi Arabian oil is going dry. Their wells are going dry. Did y'all know that? Yeah. They don't want anybody to know that either. But that's why they've been fighting with Syria and backing the Syrian thing and so involved with Qatar because they're about to be out of oil. And guess who has all the oil? Pretty much Iran. And you know what? Another reason Iran wants nuclear power plants, not just because they're religious fanatics and need want to make a bomb because they want to get rid of Israel, but they need the power plants to build the refineries and to drill for the oil that they have. And so they're, they're seeing the fall. They know Saudi Arabia is going... Under they're going to, they they're trying to position themselves to be the next global oil supplier with Russia. Isn't it interesting that Russia and Iran are uniting and just signed a gazillions of dollars contract with who? China to supply oil to China. Guess who they want out of the picture? The United States of America, exactly. Do you know that this plan, this plan was hatched years ago. Henry Kissinger was involved in it. He went to the Saudi princess, the Saudi king, and said, look, we'll make a deal with you. You keep oil prices low, we will not drill or build any more refineries. That's why there's been 30-something years of really no new drilling and building of refineries in America. But here's what happened, y'all. We tied our financial future to a finite source. Oil wells go dry after a while. The main well in Saudi Arabia, it's been, the information has been leaked out that it now, they drill out what comes out of it is 90% water. Not good. Right? We're in a heap of trouble. Now our leaders, if we'd have had leaders who really loved America and who really wanted to do the right thing, would have pulled us out of Middle Eastern involvement a long time ago. But that's never been the goal. Because Satan is behind the scenes. And he's manipulating and he's going to use Islam and he's going to use the control of oil and he's going to use the greed and the, and the insanity of men. He's going to use all that to bring about his end time scenario. Right? So, frankly, what I'm saying is all this didn't have to happen. Right? But it is happening. So he tells us here the black horse will ride, and the black horse, and see what's interesting about these, these horses, these four horsemen of the apocalypse, is I've shared with you, Zechariah 6, that they're spirits that are just driving forces behind the scenes. So we see the driving force behind the scenes to form a world government with the white horse. We've seen a driving force behind the scenes of communism to take peace from the earth and to kill many, many people. We've seen that come to, these things come to their height, to their, to their maturity, to their fruition. Well, we're about to see both the third horse, the black horse and the green horse come to their full fruition and maturity because the full fruition and maturity of the black horse he says that he saw a pair of balances in his hand and he said a measure of wheat for a denarii which at the time was a day's wages and three measures of barley for a denarii 
What he was telling us is that this black horse is going to collapse the world economy and cause there to be such inflation and food shortages that many are going to die and many are going to, to see the world economy in peril. Now why are these spirits, this black horse spirit, why are they working this to this direction? Because Revelation 13 always told us that the Antichrist and the beast world government with seven heads and ten horns and the false prophet, the Pope, who will work with the Antichrist and the, and the world government, they always told us that we would come to a day when they would force everyone to take a mark in their right hand or their forehead and they would not be able to buy or sell. So the end game has always been to get control, complete control of people through economic, personal, individual economic sanction. You know, I heard uh, Brother Steve Quayle say this and it was powerful. He said the Bible says that the love of money is the root of all evil. And he said this, he said, so if the love of money is the root of all evil, then the control of money is the control of all evil. And Satan knows that. And the satanic worshipers and the people who follow him, they know that. And so the game has always been to get to a place where the system could control the economy of the world so he could control every person and make you take a mark and pledge allegiance to Satan, to Lucifer, to make you pledge allegiance to feed your family. He's going to make you decide between Jesus and this physical world. Just like Nebuchadnezzar. Remember when Nebuchadnezzar built the statue? And he said, when everyone, when I play the sound of the music, everyone's got to bow down to this statue. Well, the Jews knew. We serve the Lord Jehovah Yahweh. We're not to bow down to any graven image. We have one Lord, one God, one King. We will not bow down. I tell you to this day, obviously most of the Jews in captivity in Babylon under Nebuchadnezzar submitted to that and bowed to that statue. But Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and Daniel refused. And they were thrown into a fiery furnace. But here's the good news. Refusing to pledge allegiance to this coming new world order, this world government, this antichrist, their economic system. Refusing to take their mark in the right hand or forehead, that, that chip that will control who buys or sells. Refusing that will throw us into a fiery furnace of trial and test and struggle. But I'd rather be in the fire with Jesus walking around with me in the fire than bow to the statues and the images and the idols of gold and silver and money. God is going to allow this because the idols of man have been money. It's been gold and silver and fame and wealth and success. That's the statue. And that's why Jesus said you cannot serve God and money. So God's going to allow Satan to set up a system where he controls the financial economic system of the whole world. And he's going to say hey, to all of us, you bow down and accept it or you die. And Christians are going to have to say, no, Jesus is my Lord, I will not bow. I will not bow. I will not submit to this. I don't care what I'm going through. This has always been the end game. God's warned us of this for thousands of years. Be ready. And now we know it's that day, that hour, that time, because the technology and the ability for them to do it is here. To track every person on the earth. To chip or mark every person on the earth. To control every bit of global finance and global financial transactions. The It's here. Now. And the Bible is very clear in Revelation 14. Let's read it. Because this is, this is paramount. You need to be warning people around you. Do not submit to this coming economic 
system. Do not pledge allegiance to the beast, the world government, the UN forces, the Antichrist. Do not take this mark of theirs in your hand or forehead. I don't care what you have to do. I don't care if they decide to put your head under a guillotine. I don't care what you have to do. Because the Bible is very clear. Even though we have preachers saying, no, you could take the mark and still be saved. Thank you, John MacArthur. No, you cannot. The Bible is clear. If you submit, if you bow, if you pledge allegiance. Although the Bible uses the term worship. But you know what worship means? It simply means to bow and kiss the hand. You're going to bow and kiss the little hand of the government to feed you? It's why they've tried to get us dependent on government. (coughs) Revelation 14. Let's just start at verse 1. And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on Mount Zion, and with him a hundred and forty and four thousand, having his father's name written in their foreheads. And I heard a voice from heaven as the voice of many waters as the voice of great thunder, and I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps. And they sung, as it were, a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders. And no man could learn that song but the 144,000 which were redeemed from the earth. These are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. And in their mouth was found no guile. And they were without fault before the throne of God. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth. To every nation and kindred and tongue and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God! Be afraid! the judgments and the wrath of God. Be afraid of spending eternity in hell. Be afraid. God says what He means and He means what He says and He will do what He said He would do. Fear the Lord and give glory to Him. For the hour of His judgment is come and worship Him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. And there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And a third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast in his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night who worship the beast in his image. And whosoever receiveth the mark of his name... Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus Christ. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Write, Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. If any man takes this mark that is connected to buying and selling to this economic system, to this new world government system that's coming, to this new world leader that's coming. And that that is, listen, God takes that as a complete denial and rejection of Jesus Christ as the Messiah. You've picked another Messiah. you picked the world government to save you. you picked the Antichrist to save you. And all you're going to save is your skin for a little short time. And then it's hell forever and ever and ever and ever. This is Bible. This is Bible prophecy. This is clearly not just... You know, it's amazing. These Antichrist leaders, these Lucifer-worshipping rich bankers and, and, and... celebrities and everybody else. It's so amazing how they deny the Bible and reject the Bible as myth. Yet they work real hard to bring it to pass just like it's written, don't they? 
This is undeniable, the mark of the beast. This is undeniable that the economic system... So, so here's the thing. If the economic system has to go cashless, if the economic system has to go digital, has to be in your hand or your forehead, that means we got to do away with all other currencies. we got to do away with cash money. Which cash money in the world dominates the entire world? The U.S. dollar. So what has to be removed to bring this about? And are they doing it? Who remembers Timothy Geithner? Anybody remember Timothy Geithner? He worked for Obama at the Federal Reserve. Secretary of the Treasury or something like that. I can't remember his official title. But he opened mouth and inserted foot one day. Now here's the Obama appointee. The Federal Reserve System supposed to represent the United States financial markets and the U.S. dollar. And he let it slip out of his mouth one day that we probably need to come up with another currency as the world reserve currency instead of the dollar. Now here's what's so amazing. Because of American public education that's so pathetic, that went right over 99% of Americans' heads, what he said. They just went, whew, whatever. i got to go watch Beyonce. No, what he said was, what he doesn't realize is, the moment that day happens... You're taking uh, a pickup truck load of cash to the store to buy a loaf of bread. If they'll take it. And you go, oh, that couldn't happen, Pastor Dean. Guess what? That was Germany. That happened in Germany right before Hitler took power. The economic collapse of Germany paved the way for them to accept Hitler as their leader. But now it's worldwide. It's global. Right? Now, I could talk about this all day long. But right after the economic collapse, the black horse... You know who's next? It's going to raise their ugly little stinking ugly little head. The green horse. Now the green horse ought to terrify. You. Because this is what it says about the green horse. He's got, he doesn't have a rider with a bow. He doesn't have a rider with a sword. He doesn't have a rider with a pair of balances in his hand. No, his rider is death. Death is his rider. Now all these other riders are killing folks to get their plan implemented. But this rider is death. And hell rides along with him. Sorry folks, this ain't in Clint Eastwood. It's in Pale Rider. Y'all remember the movie Pale Rider? Now this green horse, and we've proved it, it's Islam. You will see, following this economic collapse, the Islamic nations who are preparing for war and for the destruction of the United States militarily will act. We listened to a news report out of Atlanta. Was it a Fox station or an NBC station? I mean, I couldn't believe I was hearing it out of a mainstream news outlet in Atlanta, Georgia. It said that the Department of Homeland Security had denied that Middle Eastern terrorists were crossing our borders in Mexico 
crossing our Mexico, the Mexican border into the United States by the hundreds. This reporter went down there and found that in fact they were and also discovered U.S. government documents to prove that 300 militants, al-Shabaab or whatever, the ones that took control of the mall in Kenya and were killing Jews and Christians and anyone who couldn't quote the Koran properly. It was 300 of them got into the United States and they don't know where they are. But folks, that's been going on now for years. They are waiting for the day. Let me give you a little prophecy. I don't even know the woman's name. I can't remember now. A woman in the 1980s, the early 1980s, she said she grew up in a Christian home. And I'll get her name and book and everything later. I just, I'm just telling, going to tell you what the, the synopsis of what God gave her. But she grew up in a Christian home, but she had walked away from the Lord. She was an agnostic, didn't even believe in the Lord, wasn't even following God. Well, she had some, something happen to her. Anyway, she died, and she was on, on the table for a while, them trying to bring her back. But she said during this time, the Lord took her out and gave her a vision and showed her everything that was going to happen in the end times concerning America and the world, a lot of things in the world. She wrote a book about it in the early 90s. What God showed her, and of course afterwards she became a Christian, but she said the first thing that she saw was she said it was like a, like a technicolor HD movie. And of course she didn't say HD, but she just said it was crystal clear like, like watching a movie. She said she saw New York City. And she said she saw huge, tall buildings fall to the ground. And a massive cloud of dust and people running, trying to get away from as the buildings were collapsing. This was over 10 years before it happened. She said that would trigger a series of events. She said she saw five U.S. cities sometime after that. Five U.S. cities suffer a major biological attack. She said she doesn't know if the biological attack came before or after an economic collapse, but later she saw where certain cities were pretty much evacuated and complete became ghost towns. She named five of the cities. She said that she knew they were Middle Eastern terrorists. Now when you put that with the video from Glenn Beck's Rumors of War series of the cleric, of the Muslim cleric talking about fighters crossing the border in Mexico with this big of a box of anthrax set off in a major U.S. city could kill 330,000 Americans in one day with a smile on his face. No, Islam is this green horse. And soon after the, the financial collapse, I believe, or maybe even at the same time, Islam will be triggered into its move. And Islam will start World War III. See, the seals, as I've taught you, and the trumpets overlap each other. They're not separate. It's not seven seals and then seven trumpets. They overlap one another. Well, the seven trumpets tell us the story a little differently, but the seventh, I mean, the sixth trumpet tells us that out of the Euphrates River area, a war will start that will kill one-third of mankind by fire. See, I believe that this is Islam. This is, this is the picture of the fruition of the green horse, which Islam, green is the, is the sacred color of Islam, so we know that. So we know that this is the progression of end time events. 
So we would see a move toward world government. We would see the rise of communism and many wars and deaths from communism. Then we would see economic manipulation over oil and then economic collapse. Then we would see Islam rise up and cause death and destruction beyond what we could ever imagine. But then he says after Islam, after this war, the fifth seal, he says, I saw the souls who were slain for the testimony of the Word of God, the, the martyrs. And then he gives this looming prophecy. How long the, the, the martyrs who, are, who died, their blood's crying out to God from the ground, say, how long will you not avenge our blood on these wicked people? And listen, in the, the number of Christian martyrs in the world doubled between 2012 and 2013. The Muslims in Egypt, in Syria, in um, Lebanon, in Pakistan, Somalia, Nigeria, all across northern Africa, they are trying to wipe out Christianity completely, kill all the Christians. I believe this wave of persecution is just the first wave. He shows us two waves in that Fifth seal. Two waves. I believe the martyrs right now are saying, How long, Lord? Are you not going to avenge us? And the Lord is saying, There's got to be another wave of martyrdom. And then I'll do it. Oh, payback. God's going to pay back. what I'm saying God's given us a progression of how this maps out where are we right now we are in full swing I believe maybe days maybe weeks maybe a few months away from the black horse having his way with America isn't it interesting that at the Super Bowl, or no, it was the Grammys, that the satanic ritual that Katy Perry did, which you know she is completely into the Illuminati and the Satanist and completely pushing the message forth, the song she did and they did the satanic ritual to is called Dark Horse. And, it was, and, and even they had a big horse, dark horse, come on stage with red eyes. What were they telling you? We're worshiping Satan. Satan's taken over and the dark horse is here. The financial collapse is here. They know it because they've done it. They've manipulated it. They've planned for it. Right? Now, how do we know where we are? Well, I learned a few things in the last few days. That's why you keep studying, you keep learning. Between January and now, here are the words. Remember the word God gave me for 2014? Unprecedented, right? Well, these are the words of the people who said there's something unprecedented that's happened. In the last month, there's been eight plus major bankers, international bankers that work for the big banks, three from J.P. Morgan, that have jumped off 30-story buildings or hung themselves or shot themselves eight times with a nail gun, or um, in Hong Kong, in London. Here's what's interesting. A very well-known economist recently said, you know, the only time in America 
We've had bankers, or in the world, in America, but we've had bankers jumping off of buildings committing suicide was in 1929 after the crash of the stock market. He said, in his words, I quote, this is unprecedented, but we have them leaping off of buildings before the crash. What do they know that we don't know? Or who is trying to silence? What's interesting is that these men are connected to one another. One who headed up the same department here in New York, headed up the same department in London, headed up the same department in Hong Kong. The IT platforms for global trading. Isn't that interesting? This has never happened before. Never happened before. Here's another little tidbit. Three of them were from J.P. Morgan. Now, J.P. Morgan owned a beautiful building in downtown New York City, Manhattan, one of the most beautiful skyscrapers in Manhattan. Has the largest underground vault, or one of the largest underground vaults in the world. Right conveniently across the street from the New York Federal Reserve. Also conveniently, a building that has tunnels that connect the two together underneath the street. The building is appraised approximately at close to $3 billion. That's how much the building is worth. J.P. Morgan, one of the biggest international banking firms in the world just sold prime property in New York City, a building worth $3 billion, sold it to the Chinese for $725 million. Now who does that? Who does that? And then you've got their top banking Officials jumping out of windows. Now, I don't know. Maybe I'm a crazy conspiracy theorist. But something just seems a little fishy about all this, doesn't it? Right? Also, I just read an article. Oh, by the way, the article about J.P. Morgan selling that building is in CNN Money. So you can just look it up. It's on CNN. Okay? But also I read an article, and I guess it was just over the last few months, all these firms, J.P. Morgan, Morgan Stanley, and others, Goldman Sachs, completely getting rid of selling and dumping their entire commodities divisions in their company. You know what commodities are? Needs and wants. Goods. Bought and sold goods. Food, need, things you need. They've always been a pretty safe bet, right? What do they, what do they know that we don't know? Oh, and by the way, everybody heard of George Soros? The multi, multi multi-billionaire? The vampire capitalist? Just look it up. (laughs) Horrible man, right? Manipulator of currencies, manipulator of nations, economics purposefully goes in, buys up stuff, purposely manipulates things to crash economies of countries to profit from it. The man originally profited. He was a Jewish man that actually helped the Nazis against his own people, and that's how he amassed wealth, by stealing from his own people when the Nazis were putting them to death. He's a horrible, horrible man. Satanist, Illuminati, horrible man. He just pulled all his money out and 
placed a, an investment bet of $1.3 billion, and his bet that he just placed was that the market's going to crash. Public information. All right? So obviously he knows something you don't know. All right? All little hints. But folks, this is where the Bible said we were going. Right? Then, and I'm just giving you a warning, I'm just giving you the updates. There's been reports. And I've shared this with you. Nancy's friend that was in the Department of Homeland Security in ICE years ago, I've shared with you what she said. These documents that have been released, this U.S. Army document, which says they're going to use U.N. troops, says it in the U.S. Army document, they're going to use U.N. troops to police and resettle American citizens. Recently, a Facebook friend had a friend that lives out in Texas, in the Abilene, Texas area, took pictures of UN vehicles in Texas and sent them to me. Why are UN vehicles, armored vehicles, in Texas? Texas! I don't know why Texans put up with that mess. <laughs> Somebody ought to call it a ruckus. I'm just telling you folks, it is upon us. The only shelter from the storm is Jesus. Amen. You're going to be in the fire. I'm just going to say this. I put this out there and I'm not ashamed to say. If you have any ability to make further preparations, food, water, ammo, needed medication, any things of that nature, I am warning you, and I have never done this, you guys. I've been preaching the gospel for 27 years. Never have I told people it is time to get extra water and food and things that you need. Gasoline, lights, a way to have light if there's no power. Whatever you need to do. And I know some of you have done it already. But I'm going to finish with this little story. This was sent into this Christian um, ministry that I follow sometimes, that I read. But this young guy who, probably about 21 years old, he, was, uh, he, he knows what's coming. He under and you know, here's what's amazing, y'all. Listen to me. There's a lot of people out there that are not even Christians that are just looking at what the economists are saying, what the United States government's doing, our monetary policies, everything that's going on, and they're like, it, 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 can't, it can't be brought back from the, from the destruction. They know. I mean, it's amazing. When Jesus even made the statement that the children of the world sometimes are wiser than the children of light. Right? Y'all remember that passage? But these two guys, this 21-year-old, he's, he's prepping. He's getting extra water. He's getting extra food. He believes it's, it, that the United States is going to collapse and uh, the economy is going to collapse and it's going to get crazy, right? So he's, he, he's talking, this, this 21-year-old kid, man, smarter than most adults in this world, you know. He, he's, he's getting ready. He's going to the store. He's getting himself stocked up, right? And so he, he's been talking to a friend of his, and the friend has no clue what to do, and, but the friend's listening to him and believes what he's saying. So he said, I took my friend to the store, and I was teaching him. I was showing him, you know, you need to get this, you need to get that, and you need to get this. And so he was teaching his friend 
all this stuff to do. And he said that you know, when we were standing in line and we were kind of talking to our, you know, among ourselves, he goes, I mean, it was obvious what we were doing. He said, so we walk out and we're putting the stuff in my car. And he said, this middle-aged man walks up to us and he goes, you guys are doing the right thing. He goes, you know, he said, I thought that he was, you know, wow, here's another prepper guy, you know, he, he's older than me, you know, that's cool. And he said, so you a prepper or what, you know, are you getting ready? And he goes, well, yes and no. He goes, and the young guy goes, what do you mean? He goes, well, I can tell you that I know, that I know, that I know. I have inside information that within weeks, the U.S. economy will collapse and martial law will be declared. He goes, how do you know? He goes, I work for the Department of Homeland Security. He said, in fact, I shouldn't even be telling you this, but... He said, I cannot live with or believe what we have done to your generation. And he apologized to them. And the guy, the young guy turned around and said, oh, yeah, right. Really, whatever. The guy, he said, the guy took his wallet out and took out his Department of Homeland Security identification card, but covered up his name. And showed it to him. He said, now I can't give you a specific date. He said, but I know that they were pushing toward March. He said, now it may, may not happen in March, but he said, it is drawing near. And he told them, he said, stock up on all the food and the water and the ammo that you can get because when this goes down you won't be able to get any of it. So you can say, well, I don't know if I believe that story. Problem is, I don't believe you should believe one story anyway. I wouldn't take one person's word for it for a million years. But when you start hearing it from all kind of different sources. And they're saying the same thing. But here's the thing anyway. Christians ought to be listening to the Bible. Remember what I've always said, and we'll say it again. It's not a conspiracy theory if it's prophesied in the Bible. Right? And I know some of you younger people, y'all listen to me, you teenagers, some of you younger people, there'll be younger people listening to this. I know you're like, I, I, I hate hearing that, Pastor Dean. You know, I mean, I'm young. I got my whole life in front of me. I want to do this. I want to do that. I don't, I, don't, I don't want this to happen. Well, just because you don't want it to happen, just because you'd like to do other things, doesn't mean that's going to stop it. I'm sorry. The last couple of generations has totally screwed your generation. But you have one shot to make it special. Especially those of you who sit in a church that tells the truth and knows ahead. You want to make the most of your life. The most of whatever time you've got and whatever you will have. Take somebody to heaven with you. That's worth more than anything you could do in this world. (coughs) Share the truth of God's word. Share Jesus with somebody. Warn as many. Lead as many. Be a light to as many as you can. And in heaven, when God is passing out the rewards, when God is honoring those who did the right thing, Some of the last will be first. You know, there's a parable. Where's the 11th hour worker? That Luke. Jesus told a story of this man who had hired people to go out to his field and work all day. He said, and I'll pay you whatever's, you know, 
I'll pay you a penny or whatever, a day's wages, I'll pay you to work. He said he went at another time and he saw people standing in the market idle and he said, go in my field and work and I'll pay you. And he said even at the last hour of the day, he sent them. And so at the end of the day, he had these 11th hour workers that only worked one hour of the day. And he paid them all the same. And the people had worked all day. said, wait a minute, we worked all day. And you paid them to say the same that only worked an hour? He said, didn't I give you what I agreed to give you? He said, and what is mine is I can do with what I want with what mine is. And I believe there's going to be these 11th hour workers. These 11th hour heroes. You hadn't had a chance to live your life and work for the Lord for 20, 30 years. But guess what? You can make a huge, huge impact. In this last hour, if you'll get your lives right with God and walk with Jesus and share the truth with people. Matthew 20. Matthew 20, the 11th hour workers. It is upon us. Say, Pastor Dean, I'm tired of hearing it. Well, then you probably need to find a pastor who's got blood dripping all over his hand. Amen. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you so much. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the truth. We thank you, Lord, that you warn your people so that we can prepare spiritually, emotionally, physically, financially, so that we can do the things we need to do to be a help and a light to other people around us, and so that we can be prepared so that we don't have mental and emotional breakdowns Lord, you've, you've given us that ability to know and to do. Lord, I pray right now in Jesus' name for every person here, every person listening uh, to this live broadcast, every person that will listen to the recorded uh, podcast and messages. Lord, I pray that you touch each and every one, that the Bible is true, the Word of God is true, the prophecies are coming to pass, things are lining up just like God said they were, that Jesus' return will be soon in these years ahead and that there's going to be a time of great trouble, a time of economic collapse, a time of war and destruction, a time of great testing. But also, Lord, you promised that it would be a time of great miracles and signs and wonders, that your people would be a light, that they would turn many to the righteousness found in Jesus Christ. Father, I pray that you will just fill us with not fear, but strength, God, boldness, courage in this hour to be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might, to put on the full armor of God and to step out there and to tell people about Jesus and to lead people to Jesus and to be those people who, who lay hands on the sick and cast out demons and raise the dead and show forth the light of Jesus Christ in the darkest hour of human history. Lord, we pray for grace and the anointing to take heed to the warnings, to hear the watchman, to deliver our souls and to give warning to those around us. Jesus. Hallelujah, we pray.